Hey there everyone, welcome back to ModiMate's step-by-step -step tutorial series, where we're walking through how to create a project from the first clicks through to a finished model to get you instant DWGs, renderings, and quantity estimates. In this step, we'll be tracing this floor plan, and uh, the process is very simple. We have a 3D scene here, of course, and we are orbiting around with a right-click and drag, but what we want for tracing a floor plan is typically a top-down view, right? I mean, everybody's used to that kind of top-down CAD-style drawing a canvas. Uh, eyeballing it like this is one way to do it, but we prefer clicking on this view cube's top icon. This blue button here turns your camera perfectly top down. Another way is to hold control and press up. The cube is always there and it's quite easy to remember how it works, but the arrow keys are nice too because they allow you, by using other arrow keys, to flip your view to different orientations and arrangements. You can just hold control and press arrow keys to change your view. For now, we'll stick with the top-down view mode. Now tracing this floor plan is going to be a simple process that uses our massing graphs line tool. As you've probably seen in other tutorials, the massing graph is what we're building right now because it is the armature on which we can hang the construction assemblies like walls, floors, roofs, doors, and windows, etc. So we'll get started with the line tool here and just we'll pick a random place in the plan to start drawing. How about the top left corner? Why not? And we can also choose how our lines should represent these walls. We will not draw two lines per wall. We will draw one line per wall. And that means we have a choice. Do we draw center lines or left or right or top or bottom? For the perimeter, I prefer exterior faces. Just it's a personal tradition, I guess. But and it also will not always be possible, as we'll find out in certain places, such as here. Um, but uh, for interior walls, I prefer center lines. So we'll start with the exterior perimeter. I'll just zoom on in, click here, zoom out, and I see that the perimeter is a pretty simple shape. So if we head out here, 47 foot zero, let's go to here, let's say. What length was that? 46 foot 11. As you can see here, the dimensions are quite nice and round. 46 foot 11 is a rounded to the inch dimension. And if I draw freehand lines, these lines are being rounded to the nearest four inches. The closer that I zoom in, the smaller the rounding increment becomes. Now they're being rounded every two inches. If I zoom in again, they're now being rounded every half inch. If I zoom in out a little bit, it's every inch. I prefer massing graphs to be rounded to the nearest inch where possible. Uh, and then I'll take, personally, I prefer to take care of the more precise relationships between assemblies uh, using the properties of those assemblies. So, so that's what we'll be doing for this video, but if you have an existing condition that you know with perfect certainty what size it is, and you want your massing planes to represent the face of structure or some other kind of alignment that's very meaningful, go ahead and be as precise as you want. You can type dimensions for these lengths. But as for me, I'm going to keep on going with my one inch uh, rounding where possible. So I'm now coming around the corner. I see six foot zero looks like a good dimension. Five foot six looks like a good dimension. Coming out here, 11 foot zero. Is that 11 foot zero? Yes, looks pretty good. Coming over here, 13 foot six. I've got only a couple more points in my overall perimeter. And this last point, this point here, is actually related to the first point. I want them to be aligned in the world north south direction. So I'm going to hold shift along this axis and use my cursor to go fetch that other point's relationship. As you can see, once I hold shift, no matter where my cursor goes, my pending segment is constrained to the world green axis. I can do the same thing along world red, hold shift, and I'm constrained to red. In this case, I want to constrain to green. So holding shift and snapping to this point will help me click and click to close my building's perimeter. The last step, uh, I think I've now completed the perimeter and I can double check that by pressing escape to end my lines, selecting the image and hiding the image real quick. This is the hide tool, also the hotkey is HI. I'm personally a big fan of hotkeys, so as I introduce each one, I'll start using them and try to talk about it as I work. I click hide and I see indeed I have finished this exterior perimeter. And then I'll click unhide, UH, to show the plan again, and I can resume drawing my interior partitions. So in this case, I will start carving out the interior spaces starting with the, the, the places that I find are most related to the exterior of the building. I love to draw the interior walls that align to exterior walls as a next pass of information. 
And on this plan, I see two places where that occurs. The first is here, where the front door aligns to the bathroom to bedroom door. These surfaces are desired to align. Well, in this case, I want to draw a massing edge that uh, aligns with this edge. So I will go back to my line tool, the hockey for which is LI, as I'll be using moving forward. And I'll start my point at the known point and come across, hold shift to constrain to red and snap to this line over here. Okay, so in this case, what we've just seen is that the location for this line isn't a very good fit for this wall, but it is a good fit over on this wall, and we desire for these two walls to be aligned. This is a classic, kind of complicated case at Vodimate, where you have to make a judgment call about where you want these massing edges to go. It is, if I hide the image again, we will see the relationship of these two lines is authentic to how the walls should get built, but their its location doesn't really fit either wall perfectly. If you use it to fit the exterior, this line's in a bad place, and if we move this one back in, it might not be perfect for this wall. So in cases like this, we just make a compromise. We select the lines that represent these two walls which are meant to align. We'll use the Move tool, hotkey MV, and we'll move this line up until we feel like it's a, in a good spot that represents both walls correctly. This looks like a good compromise location to me, three and a half inches up from where it used to sit. Okay, so that's one interior alignment. The next major interior alignment are these walls as they relate to this exterior face here. Just as before, using the hotkey LI, I'm jumping in the line tool. I'm drawing an edge up and up and up to here and I'm gonna see 20 foot three looks pretty good. This line here has no bearing on anything else in the plan. So I'll just come around the horn and trace the perimeter of this room. I'm just eyeballing the center of walls. And if I ever feel like the spacing needs to change, I can highlight my edge, MV to move, come up one inch, looks pretty good. Okay, so that line is centered. Now in this case, the lines that I drew do appear to be a decent representation of all one, two, three, four walls all in a row. Their arrangements may not be perfectly centered in each case because their assemblies change. This wall is thick, this wall is thin, this wall is an exterior wall between two unconditioned spaces. They'll all have different assemblies, So, but, but they do desire to be aligned. So the number one thing to get your head around in Modimate is the massing graph is like a map of which assemblies you want to exist. You do not want the lines to jog in and out because if you did, it would mean I want there to be a small assembly here, which jogs between the two uh, north-south assemblies, but that doesn't exist. These are one, two, three, four aligned north-south walls. So they are represented by four aligned north-south massing edges. Cool, okay, with that out of the way, the rest of our drawing is very straightforward. Let's get rolling. I will quickly carve out this inconsequential little closet here. That one's nice and carved out now. I'll come up from the point I previously laid here for the bathroom now. Coming up over here, six foot zero looks like a, a pretty intentional round number. Nine foot one. These are not the clear interior dimensions, of course. These are the center line dimensions and also the exterior wall. So. Nine foot one is not the length of the walkable space in this uh, this bathroom, but uh, anyway, this this line up here I will now grab and I'm gonna come up here, trace across, hold shift, and snap to my previously drawn line, representing the uh, four aforementioned for north south walls. So click and snap, looking great. This line looks like it wants to be roughly aligned. There's no reason for this alignment, so. I'm free to choose my point of my choosing. Five foot eight looks good. I will come down and I will come to here. 12 foot six, 12, six and a half. 12, six seems good to me. Again, I prefer one inch rounding where possible, although I can always make it more precise later. So from here, coming back two foot four, looks like a good dimension. Seven foot across. I'm just carving out spaces and I am drawing lines on top of existing lines because Modimate will consolidate them for me. 
this one looks pretty clear like it wants to be four foot and half an inch. So th in this case, I'm not using a one inch tolerance. I'm using a half inch tolerance. But let's just check in on what I've drawn so far. Select my image, HI for hide. Looks like I've got my foyer, my two bedrooms, my bathroom, their closets, the hall closet, the HVAC room. Things are looking pretty complete around here. That's great. UH to unhide. And now I will draw the master suite and the uh, washer dryer room. I'll type LI back into my line tool, snap to that first point I ever drew, come across, and start drawing this pair of rooms that share an alignment. Looks like a nice, nice square set of rooms. Come down nine foot nine across. That did not look quite centered, but it's not the end of the world. I can grab this and move it down, let's say an inch. Is an inch too far? I'll zoom in a little further. One inch seems pretty good. Great. So here I've got nine foot 10, six foot eight, all, all looks well. I'm gonna come down using my line tool again, LI. Come down to here, 15 foot one, let's say. Hold shift and bring it across to snap to my washer dryer room. <clears throat> and come back to, hmm, these small interior walls feel less important. I feel like it's important to demarcate this major uh, garage wall. So I'm gonna come down eight foot seven. Uh, that looked like one inch too short. So I'm pressing control Z to undo it. Come down to eight foot eight, let's say, and across, hold shift, snap to the HVAC room that I had previously demarcated. And now I have the important walls all bounded so I can now draw the interior rooms of this master bathroom. When drawing walls, it's always, it's crucial that you start from a known point. If I just target right here and eyeball it and click go and start drawing, take a look at what happens. When I select this point, the distances on either side of the point don't know how to quantize themselves and be nice round numbers. Instead, they are nonsense numbers. And these will come back to bite us later, of course. Everybody who's ever worked in a CAD software knows about precision issues causing small, like area calc issues and planarity issues later on. But this can be solved if I control Z and I use the, li the line tool. But I start at a known point and draw over to this point using Modimate Smart Rounding. We now will see that this line is a nice clean three foot seven from the other massing edge. So as I draw, you'll notice I always start from a known point. I don't just eyeball another intersection. So I'm coming down here, coming over, coming down, coming over here, coming down. As long as I start from a known point, I don't have to think too hard about where the walls go. Uh, whether it's a one inch tolerance or a one half inch tolerance, for these small interior partitions, I'm not sweating the details. It's really for the major room partitions, like these ones, that having a one inch tolerance feels like it keeps the room nice and round in its dimensional size. Okay, so we now have a couple small uh, stem walls here in the kitchen. Coming down here, 12, eight looks good. Two foot eight looks good. If I come down from the fridge point to here, two foot eight again looks pretty good. That means it'll be aligned to this point, which is great. I'll come across the pantry back here and come up two foot three seems good. And when I connect these two points, we're gonna have ourselves our pentagonal pantry. And I'm pretty sure I've got all the major partitions described here. There is a stem wall for the island that I can quickly lay out. What I'm gonna do there is I'm going to hold shift and get a good sense of, like when I hold shift, as you can see, dimensions stop being rounded. So I don't want that. What I do want is 3.67. I'm gonna say it's around here. And I come down here and I will lay down the center line of this island here, seven foot three. And now I will delete this construction line, delete. I now have a freestanding edge for the island and a small edge for the wing wall there. I think at this point, I have all the walls I need. 
This looks like it does not need a full wall. I have this dividing wall. I will type HI to hide my image. All my rooms look like the flow is correct. I'm going to say this is complete. And next we will be moving on to lay out where the doors and windows exist so that as we elevate this plan, we have an easy time of also adding doors into, into the plan. Catch you there.